All right, I fixed the problem. I don't know what it was, but that's all right. We're in business now. So I'm going to open up the ball and the ball user control. So we're double clicking those. We got ball user control and just the ball. I'm going to start with the user control because there's less going on. So what this does basically uh, gets the input and sends it to the uh, ball.cs file. So it gets a copy of the ball. Uh, it figures out where the camera is. And if there's no camera, it gives you a warning. Uh, now it gets the horizontal vertical input. It also gets uh, whether or not you're pressing the jump button. Now, what this does, it calculates what forward is relative to the camera so that when you push, uh, should be set up W is forward, S is backwards. When you push W, you would like to have the ball move away from the camera which isn't always the same direction, depending on your cameras, what your camera is facing. So this way, when you push W, the ball moves away from the camera. When you push A, it moves perpendicular to the left of the camera. When you push D, it moves to the right of the camera, and S moves towards the camera. So that's exactly what we're doing here. It then normalizes it. If there's no camera, then it doesn't change anything around, just uses forward and right. Uh, and then it calls the move method of the ball. Uh, and it sends move, and move is that two uh, dimensional vector, and then jump is a true or false Boolean. All right, there is, a, I could go to the ball.cs file and look up move, but I'm gonna show you a nice way to navigate there. I'm right clicking, and I'm going to uh, find all references right there. It'll create a little list. So the first one is the definition. I know it's a definition because it says public void move. The second one is a call because it's object name dot move. So again, the first one is the definition of the method. The second one is the call. I'm already looking at the call, so I want to go to the definition. I'm double clicking the definition. So this will take us right into the move method. It's going to get that, oh, looks like move direction is a vector 3. Uh, I'm guessing the z coordinates, or the, the y coordinate will be 0. Yeah. So you're not moving up and down. You're moving forward, backward, left, and right. And then we got our Boolean. All right. So here's the first thing we're going to check out using torque. So what is torque? Torque is how it rotates. So there's two ways to move the ball. One of them is you can rotate it, and then that rotation causes the ball to move when it's on the ground. If you don't use torque, you're in the else right here, where instead of adding a rotation, we're going to add a linear force to move it in a direction. And those are the two different ways to control it. Now, if you use just torque, when you're in the air, you have absolutely no control. If you use the regular add force, nobody cares if the ball's on the ground or the air, it's gonna add the same force. I personally like a hybrid approach, so we'll be modifying this so that we have ability to add torque and to add a little bit of force, which will let us in the air have a little control. So right now we're just gonna experiment with what's here. Now down here is where we're gonna check out jumping. You don't always wanna jump. So what I'm gonna do is ruin this code. I'm gonna do true or whatever that condition is. So it'll always add some force in the up direction uh, if I push the jump button. Ooh, I better look at order of operations here. So I just said true or. I don't want to always jump. I want to only jump if the jump uh, Boolean is true. So it's true or. So let's check out this Raycast. So Raycast is where you send out a vector and see what it hits. So it's going to go from the position of the transform, now this is attached to the ball, so it's the ball's position. What direction is it going? 
negative up is also known as down, and it's going to go the length of the ground ray. So now we're going to go back over, and again, I did modify it. I put true, and I added the parentheses I've highlighted and the parentheses on the right. So make sure you save it, or any of your changes won't take effect. Now when I click on Rollerball, and I go down to the ball script, here's Move Power. Right there, it's already set at 5. Uh, use Torque. I'm going to use Torque, so make sure your Use Torque is checked. Angular Velocity, you can set a limit for that. And then uh, Jump Power right there. So let's hit Play. So you should be able to jump. Now, this ball just went crazy. Try to hit spacebar as quick as you can. Why in the world is that ball flying up? How many frames do you think I hit spacebar for? Probably at least five or seven frames. Even if I'm fast, I'm gonna hit it a few frames. So, if I hold spacebar down, the ball's going to leave the screen. We can watch the shadow move. The ball just went straight up. I held the spacebar for about a second. That is definitely not the behavior I want. Maybe it is in your game, but it's definitely not the behavior I want in my game. So what we're going to do later is add a cooldown over here. So you can't just jump, 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 jump every frame. Uh, I don't know the frame count off uh, already, but it's probably, it's usually somewhere between 30 and 90 or uh, frames per second because I'm not doing very much visual processing here uh, so let's go and undo that true right there the easiest way to do it change it to false so it'll be false or that ray cast so this should fix the jump problem it should just add a uh, force one time and until we're back on the ground well actually that's not entirely true either but this will be a believable jump. We'll talk about why that's not really true. All right, let's check out uh, rolling around now. So it looks like it's rolling back and forth okay. Now in the air, I don't really like this camera view, so I'm gonna move the camera. So I'm gonna click the main camera. I'm going to move my view to a place where I can watch the ball go into the air a little bit. And now selecting the camera, I'm going game object, align with view. You could do align view with selected, which does the opposite, but I'm gonna go align with view. Now the camera disappeared. What really happened, I'm gonna zoom backwards a little bit, and you see that the camera just went to where we were looking, right there. It's sometimes annoying to try to adjust the camera with the little handles right here. So what I like to do is find the angle I want, select the object, align with view, control shift F. Just does things a little faster. All right, this way I can see what's happening a little more easily. So when you jump, notice if you try to control it in the air, you actually don't get control what you do get is torque control. So I can spin the ball up, kind of like if you're golfing and you put some backspin on it and it lands and then that little momentum it had can affect where it lands. So that's how uh, controlling with torque works. Now I'm gonna turn the torque control off of the ball. I want to jump a little higher. Let's go maybe eight. I'll double my jump. So now we're using uh, just a regular linear force way to control the ball. And this should give us some aerial control of the ball. So we should be able to control the ball in. Wow, that's a little more jump power than I was anticipating. So eight's too much for me. I'm going to go five, I think would be a middle middle value that might work better. I just want to see the aerial control that we get. All right, you should be able to control the ball in the air. Notice whatever spin the ball has coming off the ground, it 
kind of maintains that spin. And I'll jump one more time. And if we watch, the ball kind of slowly stops uh, rolling in the air. So that comes down to some physics. We'll look at that on the next lesson, but just to give you a quick preview, all those properties are here in the rigid body. Drag right here, it slows you down in a linear way, meaning if you're moving forward, it slows your speed in that direction. <laughs> Angular drag, the next one down, slows down how fast it's rotating. So those are the two things we'll start with uh, tomorrow.